Julia is supposed to be a great programming language, but it can't even do simple math correctly. Take a look at this. If you take 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.3, it should be zero, but it's actually not. Here in Julia, you have all of these times 10 to the minus 17, which is 0 0.016 times, and then 555111, etc. So it's close to zero, but it's not zero. So why is it not zero? What are they not telling us? Why is this not being fixed? Is Julia dying? Don't worry, Julia is not dying. This is actually a very common source of confusion. You will find many questions on Stack Overflow, Discourse, Slack, asking why this happens, why is this not zero? Applied mathematicians and computer scientists have known about this for a while now. This is part of something called floating point arithmetic. And it's not just in Julia, it is common in many programming languages. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about why this is not zero and what you can do if you really need this to be zero or smaller than 10 to the minus 17. Before we go into that though, I'm going to go through all the programming languages and show that this behavior actually happens in those as well. So if you think this is interesting for you, please like and subscribe and get ready to rumble. So here we are in VS Code. I'm going to go to some other place and I'm going to open Python. And Python doesn't exist. Python 3 exists though. If I take Python, the repo, and I say 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.3, this is the same. This is the same value exactly. Nothing changed. If I go into R, another very common language, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.3, same value. Another programming language, JavaScript. I'm actually going to access it through Node. Inside node 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.3, not zero, the same value. Let's go a little bit deeper. Let's look into C. So this is a simple C code. It just has something to print the value. 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.3. When I compile this C code, gcc main.c, write it to something called main C dot exe. How do people call this in English? Exe? Exe? I don't know. Main.c executing. The output is the same. Maybe something new handles this. Rust? Well, let's look into Rust. So this is the Rust code. Very small. 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.3. Let's compile that Rust code. Rust C main RS and write it to something called main Rust.exe. Main Rust. Same thing. Same value. Okay. This happens to all programming languages that use the same kind of floating point arithmetic. So why is it not zero? In most modern computers, numbers are represented using 64 bits. So that means you have a sequence of either zeros or ones, and that sequence of length 64 is associated with a real number. So you have two to the power of 64 possibilities which is much less than infinite real numbers. So you can only represent a very small amount of the real numbers, a finite amount, which is the important part here. And it means that some of the numbers that you would like to represent cannot be represented at all. Second, these numbers are in binary. So just to be clear, when I say in binary, I'm talking about this sequence of bits. You have one, zero, one, for instance. This is a number in binary, and this number is obtained by taking each one of these digits and multiplying by a, a specific power of 2. So the first one is multiplied by 2 to the 0, the next one 2 to the 1, the next one 2 to the 2. So this is 1 times 4, this is 0 times 2, and this is 1 times 1. So this is number 5. Okay, so it's easy to see if you count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's how integer binary numbers are represented. But we are not using integer numbers here. We are concerned about more general numbers. In particular, we are looking at rational numbers. So you can also have things like 11.01. So this can also be a binary number. It is a non-integer binary number. So here again, the digit is multiplied by two to the power of zero. This one is multiplied by two to the power of one. 
and then you start to get the fractions 2 to the power of minus 1 and 2 to the power of minus 2. So this is actually 2 plus 1 plus 0 times f plus in 1 times a quarter. So this is 3.25. So you can represent even numbers that are not integers in binary format. So this means that when you write something in your computer like 3.14, it is actually being translated into binary and truncated into one of these 2 to the power 64 numbers that the computer can represent. So in general, you cannot be sure that the number that you want to represent, it's possible to be represented in your computer. And this is the root of all problems. You have these two things together. You cannot represent all numbers because you only have a finite amount of numbers that can be represented with 64 bits. And these numbers are represented in binary. So what happens with the specific numbers that we used? One of them is 0 0.1. 0 0.1 in binary, it's actually 0 0.00011 and this 0011 repeats infinitely. So this is 0 0.00011011011. 0 .00 and so on. The other number is 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 is actually 0 0.0011 that repeats infinitely, which is... And the other number is 0 0.3, which is also very close to this 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, repeating infinitely, and so on. These numbers in decimal, so in base 10, they are finite, they look nice, but when you convert them to binary, they actually need an infinite amount of digits to be described correctly so they will need an infinite amount of bits to be expressed so they need to be truncated and they will be truncated at some point there is actually some things that i'm not telling you exactly just think about that so what happens here then well let's create a simple example let's use only six of these numbers after the period so we can cut it down here zero 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 one one zero 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. So this simplification, you have 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 being 1 plus 1 is 10. So 0 here, the 1 carry over. 1 plus 1 is 10, 1 carry over. So this is the result, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0 in base 2. But 0, 3 is this thing here is slightly different so this last bit is wrong and that's what's happening which is kind of a problem when you want to do these computations and that's why there's a whole field of study dedicated for these kinds of things so if you have the chance i recommend looking into some kind of class for numerical methods or specifically floating point arithmetic so now for the second question which is well, are they not going to fix this? And the answer is no, there is nothing to be fixed. It is working as expected. The I3754 specification, which was defined in 1985, is being implemented in probably 99% of, of the computers. If you're using something from the hardware and you want it to be fast, it's probably the I3754. So that's what you want if you want speed and if you want to make sure that things are working correctly with the, the numerical errors that are a part of the floating point arithmetic, you have to do the math. Essentially, that's the basic answer, the, the straightforward but not easy answer for this problem. You have to do the math and make sure that you're doing it right. Let's say, however, that you are not going to do the math or that you actually know that you can't allow any of these errors because your, your objectives are not to do this kind of scientific computing, but something else. But you have a few options to avoid or mitigate this problem. Be aware that you're paying something in all of these cases. The first situation is where you don't care so much that you have an error. You care that the error is too large. 
so you can use a higher precision so let's say that 10 to the minus 17 is not good but if it were like 10 to the minus 300 that will be fine so the first thing that you can do is use big float so if instead of doing that computation 01 02 with normal numbers you use big floats you're actually gonna be able to have a much smaller error depending on the precision that you select okay? so that's one solution for you so another possibility is that you want the numbers to be exact so one thing that you can do is use rational numbers so the rational numbers are also part of the base of julia just look for rational numbers or if you really want something more complicated especially if you're dealing with irrational numbers that you can look into symbolics but i'll be honest i haven't checked it for this kind of application i don't know what it does there are some irrational numbers in julia like pi and e but in general it will be much more complicated to handle it if your application is in finance it is also common instead of worrying about binary numbers at all to just use decimal numbers so there are actually packages for that you have a package called decfp.il for decimal floating point and something else called decimals.jl both of them are part of the julia math organization so you can check those things out is your application covered in these things that i mentioned if yes or no please let me know in the comments because it's very important statistics for me so i know what to do next also if you think this kind of numerical methods are interesting and you want to know more and, and you would like me to talk about it well leave a comment saying that you would be up to more videos in numerical methods and floating point arithmetic i did teach classes about this in my previous job so i kind of have some material in portuguese not in english yet and finally thanks a lot for watching thanks for the patience for the delay in the videos i hope to be more frequent if you have anything in mind that you would like me to talk about leave in the comments otherwise Please like, subscribe and press the bell button. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.